I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Psalm 86 and verse 17. What a presence of the Lord we're enjoying here right now. What an anointing of God we're just having here today. What a presence of the Lord we enjoy right now. God's got you where he wants you. I have a strong impression in my spirit that tonight's service is going to be very life transforming for people. Psalm so 86 and verse 17. I feel breakthrough coming. Tell that to somebody. Can you tell somebody, say, I feel. I can hear you say, I feel. Breakthrough coming. Come on, tell somebody, say, I feel. Breakthrough coming. Okay, you're talking to the wrong person. Find the person with faith. And look at them eyeball to eyeball. Say, I feel breakthrough. My God, you're talking to the wrong person. Come on, look at somebody with an attitude of faith. See, I feel breakthrough coming into your life. Come on, give somebody high five. Say, I feel breakthrough coming. There's a flood that's about to hit our lives. The flood of the glory of God. I'm talking to you on what I title, I feel breakthrough coming. Psalm 86 and verse 17. The Bible says, give me a sign of your goodness. A sign, a sign. Give me a sign of your goodness. That my enemies may see it and be put to shame. I'm talking to somebody right now. That's my word. I don't know about you. But, but that word is my word. I don't know about somebody here today, but that word is my word. Man of God, that is my word. That is my word. I, listen, I'm not just reading the scriptures. I'm prophesying the scriptures over my life. And I'm saying to the Lord, give me a sign of your goodness. And, and I don't want it to be hidden because this sign that God, I want you to show me. I want my enemies to see it. Somebody's not ready for that. I want you to get in that scripture. Say, Father. My God, where are the people of faith tonight? Say, Father, Father give, me a sign give me a sign of your goodness, of your goodness. That, my that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Let me hear you say, Amen. Somebody say sign. Say it again. Say God works with signs. Oh, God Almighty. The Bible says signs and wonders. These signs shall follow them that believe. God is a God of signs. God works with signs. Somebody say signs. I want you to tell somebody. Say God. Jesus, give me 100 people here with faith attitude. Say, God will show you a sign of his favor in this season. I want you to understand that signs are so important to God that he does not do anything without first sending a sign. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24, the disciples came to Jesus and they said to him, tell us what shall be the signs of your coming and of the end of the world. Because every time God wants to do something, he first reveals signs. And, and if you are very cognizant of the move of the spirit, of the rhythm of God, you will know that when sudden signs are bound to, you know, I, I, I'm beginning to manifest something is about to happen. Okay, okay. Because God always send a sign. There's a sign for favor. There is a sign for explosion. There's a sign for miracle. There is a sign 
for death. When somebody is about to die, God begins to send some signs. Am I talking to somebody? There's a sign for life. Whenever you're about to step into a new season, God begins to send you signs. You begin to see certain things begin to happen. Jesus said, look out for these signs. When you see this and that signs, then you know that God is about to return. You know the coming of the Lord is at night. I came here to announce to you somebody that the prayer that you have been praying, there are certain signs that are moving around you right now that let me know that God is about to ship. God is about to move in your life like you've never seen before. Somebody says signs. You got to be looking for the signs because the move of God is heralded by a sign. What are you about to do, God? You say, when I look around me now, the signs that I see today at Supernatural Life Center, he tells me that God is about to invade Toronto through this ministry. Come on, somebody. Because the signs are everywhere. The signs of favor. The signs God told me. He said, the harvest that's coming into this house he said you don't even have enough place to hold the harvest I said God how do I know he said look around you and see the signs can I? Can you please help me tell somebody and tell them the signs are everywhere that God is about to favor me now the signs are everywhere that God's hand is running on my life the signs are everywhere that I'm about to step to my next level my god you may not see the sign but i can see the sign that destiny is calling me i can hear the sign the sign of miracle the sign of favor the sign of deliverance the sign of the move of god there is a sign sign Please pardon me. The night service is something else. You all know. I'm, at night, the night service, I can't, I can't help it. There's just a flood that comes in the evening. L listen, we are spiritual people. We are not people of sight and sound. We are people that move by the rhythm of the spirit. We understand what God is about to do. The Bible says, Elijah told his servant, glory to God. He said, you go check what you see. Uh, there was no rain, but there was a sign. Uh, the, the Bible says, the servant of Elijah came back uh, and they said, I don't see rain. I don't see dew. I don't see drizzles. But I see the cloud a man's hand. They said, that's the sign. The man of God understood the symbol of the spirit. He understood the move of God. He understood that whenever God is about to do something, it sends a sign. When baby Christians are looking for manifestation, those who have matured, they only need to see the signs. When I see the sign of the glory of God, then I know that something is about to happen. The sign is telling me, get ready, get ready, get ready. Prepare yourself. Something is about to happen. The sign of miracle, the sign of healing, the sign of favor, the sign of the move of God, the sign of open door is coming upon this city. Get ready to run for this is your sign. God is coming. Come on, somebody. We are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what man says. We are moved by the signs from heaven. We are watching for the signs. The Bible says the wise men, they saw the stars in the cloud and they knew that was their sign. They knew that a king was born. 
They didn't see the king physically at first, but they followed the signs. And by the signs they saw in the cloud, they knew instantly that a king had been born. Is there somebody here tonight who has a spiritual intuition? Is there somebody here with a spirit of revelation? The Bible says the men of Issachar, they had understanding of times and season. The men of Issachar knew by the signs what Israel ought to do. God always moved with signs. Every time God is about to bless you, he sends a sign. Every time God is about to promote you, he doesn't just do anything. God is a God of plan. God is a God of program. God, and my God, many people don't read the signs and they die in the place that God wants them to move. Many people don't read the signs. Am I talking to somebody? If you have the prophetic ministry, you are watching for the signs. Listen, somebody, some signs signs will come in your dream. Some signs will come in your visions. Some signs will come by revelation. Some signs will come by the attitude of people. Some signs will come by the experience of your life. But if you are sensitive to God, you begin to know something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. I'm about to get out of where I am. Pack your bag. Pack your bag. Promotion is about to come. Destiny is about to come. Miracle is about to come. I see the signs for marriages. I see the signs for babies. I see the signs for the move of God. I see the signs for miracles. I see the signs for healing. I see the signs for property. Something is about to happen. God is want to do something in the heavenly realm. God wants to do something in the third heaven. And God is releasing what he wants to do by the way of a sign. Somebody says sign. The sign is very crucial because if you miss the sign, you will miss the miracle. If you miss the sign, you will not be positioned for the miracle. God speaks in signs and symbols. And if you miss the sign, you will miss the glory of God. I want to share with you tonight four basic tangible signs that you will know that God is about to shift your life from where it is to where it, it ought to be. Whenever you are praying, whenever you are praying, and your prayer is on the verge of being answered, God sends these four signs to let you know that the heavens are flipping things in your favor. Number one sign, number one sign is that you suddenly, somebody says suddenly, get fed up. With where you are now. Okay. Okay. I want to preach. I want you, you don't want to hear this. You suddenly get fed up with where you are now. You cannot fit into that place anymore. The, uh, God Almighty, help me right now. Is there somebody here that you, 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 you were trusting God for something and, and after a while, what you were very pleased with is no more sufficient. It's no more satisfactory. The, the, the job that you were so happy to get a few years back, now you're feeling that that job is too small for you. Who am I talking to? Is there somebody here, the, 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 the place that used to occupy you and you occupied, you've outgrown that place and something in your spirit can no more settle for that place my god that 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 that, that, that you always wanted to be the house that used to be so big now has become so small and you are telling people wait a minute i don't know why i feel like moving out of this house it's a sign that you are due for your next level can i talk to somebody right now the you used to like you can't wait to get in that car but now you get in that car you say wait a minute I feel like this car is not doing it for me anymore the Bible says the sons of the prophet they went to Elisha and they said my master the place where we dwell is too small you start to feel uncomfortable and dissatisfied with what used to work for you. That's your number one sign. Let me get somebody say sign. Inconvenience. You feel uncomfortable. You feel like there gotta be more. You're asking everybody, is this, is this everything I could be? You're saying to everybody, is this, I, I, I feel like this, this business, it, it's in, I, 
can't handle this level of, of convenience anymore. And people always ask you, what are you looking for? You say, I can't explain it. I just feel like I can't settle where I am. I can't settle. There's a miracle here. The Bible says, Bartimaeus the blind, he heard Jesus was passing by and something uh, rose from his belly. He says, I've been standing here for too long, begging for arms and everybody knows me in this right location but right about now I can't settle here anymore. Jesus thou son of God I need to shift my level. That's the sign. That's the sign. You begin to feel uncomfortable where you were before. Tell somebody that's my sign. Whenever I feel uncomfortable with my spiritual life, that's my sign. Whenever I feel like where I am right now is choking me, it's, it's draining the life out of me, that's my sign. Oh my God. Can I say something to you? Nobody by themselves, in themselves, can pull themselves out of a constraint except by God. The Bible says, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causeth to approach unto thee. No one cometh except the father pull him. Many people are drowning in misery and they love their misery. Am I talking to somebody right now? They are literally drowning and they can't even see how despicable their situation is. But whenever God is about to change your situation, he begins to make you feel uncomfortable. Is there somebody feeling uncomfortable right now? Is, do I have people like myself that's looking around and say, God, there got to be more. God, there got to be a higher level. Lord, there got to be something greater than this in the name of Jesus. Lord, you made me for more. I can't handle this level anymore. I can't handle convenience anymore. I need to expand. I need to explode. I need to break myself free on the right and on the left. Who am I talking to tonight? If that is you, shout right now. I break free from limitation. Number two, number two sign, rejection. Rejection, rejection is not a sign that you are not competent. It's a sign that the people in your life at that time do not have the capacity for you anymore. Can I talk to somebody right now? Rejection is not a sign that you are not able. It means that the people in your life at that season, you have outgrown it. And we don't understand oftentimes that relationship is the currency of heaven. Okay, I'm going to say that again. I want you to turn to somebody and say, relationship is the currency of heaven. How does God bless people? Through relationship. Whenever God is about to bless you, he places somebody in your life. Whenever God is about to lift you higher, he places somebody in your life. Whenever God is about to promote you, he puts somebody in your life. I want you to hear me. Relationship is the currency of heaven. So whenever God is about to take you to a whole new level, I want you to hear me, child of God. You begin to find out hmm, that something around you and the relationships in your world begins to shift. Oh, God, help me. Now, because... <laughs> Oh, Lord, help me. Uh, every time that God is about to shift your life, the first thing that he shifts is your language. Your language has to reflect your destiny. I want you to hear me, somebody. Hmm. Your language is the first rule of transition from where you are to the next level. Because everything... In your life will begin to adjust itself in the direction of your word. And the Bible says for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And whenever the Holy Spirit is working something in your belly, something so profound, your mouth begins to respond to what God is doing in you. Why will your mouth respond to what God is doing in you? Because... The first law 
of going to the other side is that you must speak like where you are going, not where you are. And that's why a whole lot of people are stuck on the same place. They desire to go to the next level, but they speak the language of where they are or where they're coming from. You cannot advance to your destiny and keep speaking the same language of where you're coming from. That's one of the strategies of the devil. The devil wants you to keep saying to yourself, things are broken in my life. Things are disintegrated. Things are falling apart. Things are scars. I don't have it. I can't do it. I'm not whole. I'm not healthy. I'm not powerful. But when God's spirit is working in you, the spirit of God begins to cause your inner man to hear the tone and the sound from heaven. And, and faith is calling you deep. It's calling on to deep. And, and, and what happens is you begin to speak the language of your future. I can. I will. I shall. I'm able. I'm a millionaire. Okay, you, you can. As I'm a millionaire. I'm strong. I'm anointed. I'm powerful. I'm beautiful. I'm resourceful. I'm a business owner. I'm a homeowner. I'm the head. I'm not a tail. I'm a winner. I'm healed. I'm strong. I'm rich. The moment that you begin to make this confession and these decrees not out of the intellect of man, but from the spirit of God, what happens is, I want you to hear me. Your words begins to sh shift the people in your life. It begins to put everybody in your life on the check. Begin to test people. Your words will test everybody in your life. If you were to speak the language of your past, people in your life that have relativity with your past, they are comfortable with that vocabulary. If you were to speak the language of your present, the people in your life, Will, will be comfortable with your present. They feel at ease when you're speaking it. But the moment you start to speak the language of your future, the language of your destiny, only few people who understand the blueprint of your destiny will feel at home to hear you say how great you're going to be. Those who do not have capacity for you, those who have expired in your life. Can I say something to you? Do you know how I go sometimes to the, to the refrigerator like some, so a few days ago I went to the fridge and I've got all this bunch of milk there and I look at it and it was expired by one day. And you know what? Some of y'all would take risk on expired milk for one day. I would not, I don't even take risk for expired milk for two seconds. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, Jesus, this ain't going to my mouth. He satisfied my mouth with good things. <laughs> the moment that your vocabulary change, the people who are expired, do you know that there are people who stay and whose space in your life has expired? No, you don't want to hear. Holy Ghost, send me to preach it. Holy Ghost, because God, because God does not fill a vessel that's filled. My God, God wants to move new people into your life, but you are all surrounded with expired people. Your place in my life is expired because you are speaking the language of my past. Okay. The moment you begin to speak about where God is taking you. They start to turn their face. They start to turn their notes. The moment you begin to talk about how rich God will make you, about how great your ministry shall be, how powerful your destiny shall be, how anointed your life shall be, how prosperous your children shall be. The beginner says she's so proud. What do you think you are? You think you are all that. In the spirit of God, my Lord, begin to push those people out of your life because right now God is getting ready to put people in your life it is a sign from heaven it is a sign from the spirit of God that there's a new set of people that are going somewhere with you a new set of people that believe in your destiny a new set of people that will stand with you. And God is bringing them right now. It is a sign from God. Somebody 
Some people can't handle your next level. They can't handle it. And you're trying to squeeze them in. I want to squeeze you in. Into my space. You're trying to convince them. You're trying to impress them. Because you're saying we've been here a long time. We hung around together a long time. But let me say something to you. There's a place where Abraham has to say to Lot. Lot, I'm about to go to my next level. Thank you, Lord, for all the journey. But right about now, right here is where it all ends. Because where God is taking me is greater than what your mind can comprehend. And I don't want nobody in my life that's taking away my anointing, taking away my power, that's talking down on my destiny. God is calling me higher now. And I'm cutting myself loose. I'm cutting myself loose. I'm cutting myself loose from everything and everybody that's holding me back because destiny is calling me. It has to move them out of your life. Oftentimes, many of us are stuck into a, a point in our lives because of the extra baggage that we are carrying. And some people, they just can't enter your promised land with you. They, they cannot. Some people are not anointed to step with you into where God is taking you. And they begin to push you out. I pray for you tonight that everybody that's occupying space in your life, Everyone that because they are there, God cannot bless you. Do you know? Okay, all right. I'm going to say something today. Do, do, do you know that there are some people because they are in your life, God cannot release the fullness of the blessing. Okay, you didn't even hear that somebody. Oh, God help me tonight. Do you know that because some people are in your life, the Bible says, and after Lord left Abraham, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There are some people when they are in your life, your revelation cannot be clear because God knows that if he anointed you in that Season, they are going to come and drain away that anointing. And that's why you've not been able to enter into the fullness of your anointing. But the spirit of God says, God is sending the signs. And God is now deleting, delete, 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 delete every force of darkness that cannot enter the promised land with you. Rejection. They can't handle you anymore. They say you talk too loud. You talk too big. You, you pray too much. You are too excited. Anybody in your life that's not comfortable with your prayer life, let them use the door. Because when trouble comes, it's prayer that will help you. And they will not be there at that time. Am I talking to somebody right now? You got to understand that the greatest blessing in your life are those that God puts there. When God want to bless you, he puts people there. When the devil want to hurt you, he positions people there. There are voices for demons. There are hands of the devil. There are people who are the voices of rejection. The voices of, of, of condemnation. The voices of guilt. The voices that are rehearsing your past. Your failure. Your mistakes. They never talk about your power. They never talk about how great you are. Everything that they rehearse is the things that you used to be that God brought you from. If you can't talk about where I am now and where I'm going, use the door. Number three, the spirit of God begins to call you to a place of prayer. I want you to understand that whenever God is about to do something in the earth realm, the first sign is that God was cause a spirit of prayer to fall in the earth. Why does God need somebody to pray? I want you to look in my eyes tonight. Because God is a responder. I want you to tell somebody, say, the Lord is a responder. Say, by the nature of God, he responds. Every act of miracle is God responding to somebody's prayer. It seems to me as if God does not initiate miracle. When this revelation hit me, I started to study my Bible. 
I began to search from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I started to see through scriptures and I never saw one time where God out of the blues initiated any miracle. In fact, miracles are the reaction of God, the response of heaven to the prayer of somebody. God himself is limited until somebody begins to pray. Are you with me, somebody? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. God himself will not move until somebody begin to pray. Every blessing is a response to prayer. Somebody say, well, God can see me in my situation. God should know that I need a house. God should know that I need a car. God should know that I should be married by now. God should know that my church should have been growing. God should know Know that my ministry should be going to places right now. Let me announce to you that God does not respond by what you think he knows. He responds by what you ask him. And that's why the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find not and the door will be open. Whenever it's time for you to move to your next level, God begins to give you an urgency to pray. I'm not talking about the church prayer. I'm, I'm talking about the spirit of prayer. The spirit of intercession. Is there somebody in this building that you sense at the season in your life an anointing for prayer that's just coming on your life? You're trying to walk, but prayer is coming out of your mouth. You're trying to talk to somebody, but you can't concentrate. Prayer is coming out of your mouth. You are driving, but prayer is coming. You are going like, I don't even know what I'm praying about. And then everybody say, what are you talking about? I don't know. Don't worry about it. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and you caught yourself praying from your sleep? Because you got to have this breakthrough. You got to have this miracle. You got to birth this baby. You got to bring forth this business. You got to fight this battle. And you, you can't do it until you start to intercede. Until you start to groan. And because you can't pray by yourself. So God gives you the spirit of prayer. The Bible says, for we know not how to pray <laughs> but the Holy Ghost he make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God you find yourself in church you find yourself on the altar you find yourself in the throne room something in your belly wants to pray you don't know what demons are doing but something in you wants to pray God says I'm about to give you a that you've never seen before and because it's so big I need you to call upon me the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 call upon me and I will hear you I will show you great and mighty things which you have not known before tell somebody beside you I'm calling say my soul is calling come on tell somebody say my spirit is calling I can hear you say, I'm calling. Say, I don't know how, but I'm calling. I don't know why, but I'm calling. My belly is calling. My soul is calling. Have you prayed and it's not your mouth praying, but your spirit? Have you been to the place of prayer where you have no words, but your belly is praying? You don't even know what you're talking about, but you can get out of the presence of God because God has arrested you for your own destiny. Am I talking to somebody? God has got you arrested in order to birth your own destiny. And God says, stay here for two days. Stay here for three days. Stay here for seven days. Because right now, when you leave the place of prayer, there's going to be a miracle. Every time God wants to move in my life, every revival is not birthed in the place of noise. It's not birthed in the place of exuberant verbose noise his birth in the place of of prayer and intercession man of god the lord will call me to himself he said leave everything there are times the lord will say to me cancel speaking engagement don't go out for three days lock up yourself because i want to birth something i want to birth something i want to birth my glory somebody tonight there's a spirit of prayer that's coming over your life so that you can birth Something powerful. Somebody said, that's my sign. 
I can hear you say it again. Say, that's my sign. When I feel like prayer, like never before, it's my sign for the next level. When Jesus was about to start his ministry, the Father compelled him to the place of prayer. When he was about to go to uh, 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 Golgotha, God compelled him to the place of Gethsemane. And when he was in that garden, the Bible says he began to pray until the pores of his body, blood was coming out of it. Blood began to come because God needed him to pray. Today, as I stand with you in agreement, we are praying concerning things that are going to happen this year. I don't know about you, but for me, this year is not over yet. And I'm ready to take what God has in store for my life. I'm, I'm preaching to somebody right now. The, the, the second half of 2018 is going to birth for me miracle. And I am ready now, hallelujah, to position myself prophetically to switch what God is about to do right now. Somebody say right now. I connect myself with the third heaven to birth a miracle in the earth realm. Only people of faith say that. I want to give you an opportunity to say it again. Shout it with faith. Say it right now. Right now. That's better. Let's do it with faith. Say it right now. Right now. I connect myself to the third heaven to birth a miracle in the earth realm. We are, we are birthing a miracle on the job. We are birthing a miracle on the finance. We are birthing a miracle over the destiny of our children. We are birthing a miracle. The stone which the builders rejected. They are about to be the chief cornerstone. It ain't going to happen except we pray. And the Holy Ghost now is giving us a insatiable spirit of prayer. And we are about to birth something in the earth realm. Eyes have not seen, my God. Ears have not heard. It's not yet come for the heart of man. What God is about to do right now. And we birth a miracle. We birth revival. We birth the move of God. We birth revelation. We birth signs and wonders. We birth freedom and liberty for the young people. We birth right now in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord said, this is where it all comes together. This is where your mind comes together. This is where your money comes together. This is where the broken pieces comes together. This is where your destiny comes together. This is where your joy comes together. This is where your anointing comes together. This is where your spirit is restored. This is where your life comes together. Right here, right now, upon this mountain, every battle that you fought, every demon that changed your life, every opposition that came against you, this is where they turn back. David said, the day that I call upon God, my enemies will turn back. For this I know that God is for me. I can't stop preaching now because the Holy Ghost told me there is elevation in the building. The people who are going to be elevated. Show me a sign of your goodness. Show me a sign. Show me a sign of your goodness. That my enemies may see it and be ashamed. Because you, oh God, has favored me. And you have comforted me on every side. I've been through so much. But show me a sign of your favor. I've suffered so much. I've been in pain so much. But in this season of my life, show me a sign of your goodness. Let me know that you are fighting my battle. Let me know that you are standing with me. Let me know that I will have victory. Let me know that weeping may endure for a night. But my joy, hey, my joy is coming in the morning. You know, we've come to the point right now where we are not managing the supernatural, but we are swimming in the glory. We are not trying to imagine God move. We're not trying to glory to God, presume God, but we are just flowing in the glory realm. Because the Bible says, the Lord whom you have sought, 
he will suddenly come into his temple. I sense in my spirit by the sign of heaven. There's a sudden invasion of the glory that's about to hit some people's lives. You're not going to know how it happened. God is going to sweep you off of your feet. Am I talking to three people here? The glory will sweep you. You're going to know that this is bigger than me. I, I could not have done this. This is beyond me. This level of miracle is not about me. This is more than my effort. This is more than my intellect. This is more than my know-how. This is more than my imagination. This is the hand of God. This is the sign. Number four. God begins to call you into a place of sacrifice. Sacrifice is so crucial that oftentimes, many times, many, many seasons of our life, many times that we prayed and fasted and sought the face of God, the missing link to so many people's next level is the sacrifice. I started a study in the word of God. And I see that sometimes in your life, when God wants to take you to a level you've never been before, he's going, huh, he's going to approve you. God will approve you. He will approve of your promotion. I want you to hear me, child of God. He's going to approve you. He's going to, he's going to say about you. Look in my eyes, everybody. Like he told the devil in the book of Job. Have you seen Job, my son? God approved of him. A man who was approved by God. Have you seen Job, my servant? For there is none in the earth as righteous as him. A righteous man, one that feared the Lord and eschewed evil. One that feared God. God approved of him. The Bible said Jesus Christ, a man approved by God by many signs and wonders, by many irrefutable, by many unchangeable, undeniable evidence. You know why God needs to approve of you? Because demons always challenge the blessing of the people of God. I want you to hear this. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12 that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And he accuses them before God day and night. And every time God gives you a big ministry, every time God gives you a multi-million dollar business, every time the hand of God moves on your life and God can pick you out of the crowd and favors you and prefers you by above the rest, the enemy is going to say, why her? Why, why, why did you bless her? And God blesses you firstly because he has chosen you. And number two, because you have been approved. You have been tested and you have been chosen because nobody, hallelujah, can steal their way into the next level. You have to go through the gates of approval. Even Jesus, a high priest. Jesus, the Bible says, he, though he was born Lord of all, but yet he obtained dominion, victory by the things he suffered. So whenever that you are going through a season of trial and sacrifice is a sign that something is about to happen big in your life. I want you to follow me carefully. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says, God came to a Abraham. And God said to him, Abraham, I want you to bring your only son onto the mount of Moriah. And I want you to sacrifice him to me. And, 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 and you know what? God did not need to get the sacrifice in order to express his love to Abraham. Because God loved him regardless. But God knew that Satan would ask, why did you bless Abraham? Why did you raise him up? And you know what God will say? Satan, shut up your mouth. He fears me. He loves me. And the devil will say, how did he love you? And God said, when I ask of him to bring his son to the altar. He did not argue. And so it was not as though it was God that Abraham was impressing. He didn't have to impress God. Because God loved him regardless. And God says I've loved you with an everlasting love. But he was establishing his place in the heavenly realm. And by that act of sacrifice 
He shut down the mouth of the adversary. That I stand here. Not only by mere words. But by my appreciation. Of what Jesus has done through my covenant sacrifice. I understand. That every time I serve God. And sacrifice my time. Then I approve myself. Paul told Timothy. Study. To show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the words of truth. If I have two men who are serving in the ministry with me. And I say to one, meet me by 4 p.m. And he says, apostle, I would have loved to come, but I'm busy. And I said to one, meet me at 4. And he said to me, we are. I'm on my way. What happens one man has approved himself as a reliable vessel. Am I talking to somebody? The next time that I need somebody to do something serious, will I call the person who gave the last excuse? Who will I call? The man that I told to go and he went. He has approved himself. Listen to me. Whenever God is asking you to serve him, it's not for God. It's for you. Okay. Every time that you obey God, every time that you serve God, every time that you give to God, you have approved yourself. How will God trust you with $10 million if you don't approve yourself with $10,000? Okay. I'm like, He's God Almighty. He knows he's going to bless me. God said, uh -uh, I don't think so. Because the last time we checked, when we gave you $1,000, you couldn't even pay your tithe. That was when you remember the Gucci bag and the Prada shoes and the Givenchy shirt and all of that. And that's where you remember that you got to do this. God said, you, you, you have not approved yourself. The last time I, I ask of you, and let, let me say something to you. Each time God want to bless you, he will, it's going to be at that season. I know that to be true because it's happened in my own life time and time again. At that very season, he's going to ask you to do something you've never done before. It, it, it might be to sow a seed. It might be to uh, go on missions. He said, I want you to go on two months of missions. Uh, take time out of work and, and devote your time. Don't worry about the money. It's going to be, it, God, 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 God can say to you, I want you to get busy. Pick somebody and bring them to church every Sunday. Make sure they are there. He might ask you to love the unlovable. He might ask you to go to your family and reach out to one crazy person there. Who doesn't love God? He said, be on them and make sure you, you are on their case. Until you bring them to love Jesus. Your test, your sacrifice is a sign that you are due for the next level. What you do with your sacrifice determines what happens in your life. He's waiting to see your reaction. Why? So that he can approve you. He's going to approve of your character. He's going to approve of, of your love. He's going to approve that you do not prioritize money above God. Am I talking to somebody? You know why God has not blessed some people with finances? Because he knows the only reason why he's had them in church is because he's just given them enough to get along. He knows if I give this individual access, they do not have the capacity to handle that level of blessing. Some people, the moment they get blessing on a the level, they'll be like, Lord, I'm sorry, apostle. I'm not coming to church. Why? Because I need to, I need to go on a two-month tour, apostle. I'm just going from Dubai and I'm going. I, I said to somebody, you never know people of character, indeed, until they have a reasonable amount of money. If you have one million dollars sitting in the bank and you're still washing the church bathroom, then the Lord is on your side. That, that's humility. Glory to God. God says, I will test you. Some of us, God will test you to the point that money means nothing to you. People's hatred means nothing to you. People backbiting you, people criticizing you, people talking down what you means nothing to you. God will, he will squish you. He will take you to the father's house. He will ask of you to lay down your Isaac on the altar. Many of us are Isaac is ourselves, our time, our ego, our money, our finance, our bank card. If there's something in your life that's bigger than God, that thing is your God. I just said something right there. If there's anything in your life that's bigger than God, 
that thing is your God. And the sign of favor is that God begins to say to you, lay it down. And, and I love the way, man of God, that the Lord puts it with Abraham. God said to Abraham, Abraham, your son, whom thou lovest. God had to pull that emphasis because God knew he loved his son. Your son, whom you love. The things that you hold dear to your heart, lay it at the altar. And watch what I'm going to do in your life. Oftentimes we're asking God to use us. God says, I'm looking for people to use. I'm looking for someone to bless. But are you ready to approve yourself for this anointing that's about to come on your life? Are you ready to approve yourself for this glory that's about to hit your life? Can God trust you to be humble with power? Can God trust you to be humble with responsibility? Can God trust you to be humble with money? Can God trust you to be a promoter of the kingdom? To finance humongous ministry project? Can God trust you to come into a house like this and say to me, Apostle, what, 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 I see what God has done here in six months. And I know it would have cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Man of God, what is next for you? What is God saying? How can we put a dollar over dollar and cents over cents to see the next outbreak of glory? Can God trust you to say, go and do something. Do that. Do that. Reach out to the homeless. Can God trust you with that? Our sacrifices are through us. It's not for the devil. It's not for God. It's for us. There are some of us that God will stand with you to the very end. And say, I know him. After Abraham approved himself by sacrifice. By the things he suffered. By the things he endured. After Job approved of himself. God said to the devil about Abraham. He said, I know Abraham. I know him that he feared the Lord. I know him. Cornelius approved himself unto God. And God had to raise up Peter to go to the house of Cornelius to preach Jesus to him. Go to the house of Cornelius. God was not even able to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until he told Abraham. Because he had approved himself as somebody that could speak eyeball to eyeball with God. He has stepped into a realm that nobody could step into. By his sacrifice. Your sacrifice approved you before God. Your devotion. The times you come in the house of the Lord. The time you worship. The time you praise. The time you give your last. The time you burn everything in your life like a burnt offering. It approves you before God. And that's a sign. Number four, that you are ready for the next level. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. I have to give you the total gospel, God's people. I have to let you know the entire gospel. It's not a gospel of feel good, get excited. It's also the gospel of responsibility. We have to approve ourselves before God. There's power coming on the church in this season. There's a glory coming on the people of God. There's a shift coming to Toronto. I have to approve of myself. Every day God is calling me to a high level of consecration. Every day God is calling me to a higher level of holiness. Higher level of devotion. Giving to God. I approve myself. Some people are struggling with 10%. Some of us, are, we don't even do 10% anymore. We have gone over 10% long ago. We're just pouring everything at the altar. Approve yourself. And that's why those who don't know your story, they can't judge your glory. You can't judge my glory. Tell to somebody, say, you can't judge my glory. If you don't know my story. You can't judge my gain. If you don't know my pain. You can't judge it. You people cannot judge how great your blessing is. When they don't know what you're doing for God in secret. Am I talking to somebody? Some, some, some people here are going to be so blessed. That, that some, 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 some tongue waggers will try to talk down your blessing. And say, we don't even know what they're doing. We don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. We don't know if she's the only one. God will say to that person, shut up! Shut your mouth! I favored her! Because she served me. I blessed her! I put my oil on her! Because she's my child. Because he's my child. Do you know what covenant they made with me in the secret? Do you know how they serve me in the secret? Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. When Abimelech was going to take the wife of Abraham 
And even though Abraham had told Abimelech, she's, she's my sister, she's not my wife, God did not care. God went by night and told, her, I told Abimelech, Abimelech, you're a dead man. I'm talking the same way God said it. You're a dead man. Because the man whose wife you have taken is a prophet. He has to pray for you. Abimelech said, God, I don't know. He told me she's my sister. God said, it doesn't matter. Touch not. I'm anointed. I do my prophet no harm. That some people here, by the, by the reason of your walk with God, I'm not talking about lukewarmness. I'm not talking about complacency. But real commitment and covenant to God. That your heart is authentic with God. He's going to raise up all heaven just to defend you. Touch not! My anointed, my hand is upon her. She's special to me. He's going to fight every devil that's trying to mess with you. You're going to sleep at night and 15 angels will surround you. The Bible says he will give charge to his angels that they hold you lest you dash your foot against a stone. He will not let one here fall out of your head. This is your year. Can you see the signs? Can you see the signs? Can you see the signs? Is it about the rain? Come and tell somebody, say, I see the signs. Say it with faith. Say, you know, faith has an attitude. I want you to have an attitude of faith. Tell somebody, say, I see the signs. That's good. That's good. Now, do it better. Say, I see the signs. It's about a rain. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. It's about to come on my life. Tell somebody, say, every sacrifice. My God, I can hear you say with faith. Say, every sacrifice that I laid on the altar is full and the overflow of blessing is coming on my life in this season. Come on, somebody give him praise in the house this morning. The Lord is asking me to place a demand on blessing for you today. It looks as if God will not move until somebody begin to place a demand. The assignment that I have tonight, I don't know whatever it is that you're trusting God for. But the Lord told me to stand in agreement with you in this service. And to start to place a demand upon those things. Things that are impossible to achieve. Things that nobody can do. He says, agree with my people. Begin to place demand for miracles. Begin to place demand for open doors. He told me to stand with you and begin to place demand for healings. He said, stand with my people. Begin to place a demand for their miracle. I want you to be ready for that. I want you to be ready for it. The signs are all over the place. In, in, in closing tonight, look at my God's people. We are in the time of the latter rain. We're in the time of the latter rain. The Spirit of the Lord knows that I stay in His presence before I come before you every service. I hear God before I come out here. I'm not here to, to no, uh, produce the enticing words of men's wisdom. I'm very careful about this move of God. Number one, I'm careful not to get in the way of God. I'm careful not to begin to imagine that I'm somewhat of a preacher or somewhat of an intercessor to see God begin to move on this level in Toronto. I'm careful to begin to think that it's my smartness, it's my strategy, it's my understanding, it's my connection, it's my know-how. That's bringing God's people twice in a day within only six months of church in this city. God has blessed so many lives in this place. Remarkable miracles have taken place. And all of this is only a sign of what God will do in the coming months. This has nothing to do with Bible David. I come here as you come praying, expecting God to move. I do not take credit for everything and anything that God is doing. The Lord has blessed me with a very anointed and highly committed team who are sold out to the kingdom of God. And together we humble ourselves in service, asking that God will move. Asking that God will break yokes and heal people. We are not taking credit. We are not building a name for ourselves. I'm not out here to be famous. I'm not out here to do my own thing. I'm here as a servant, a vessel. I tell people every time I'm not a celebrity, I'm a celebrated servant. I know my assignment 
We are in the latter rain. Look around you. There's revival coming. God is breaking the fallow ground in this city. You're going to see what God will see do in only two months. Two months from now, people of God. There's a sweep of glory that's coming in this region. God is sending this word across television. All over Canada. God is saying, Canada, I'm restoring you back to your God. Is there somebody that's hungry for the glory? Is there somebody hungry for revival? Is there somebody that says, God, move in my days. The signs are here. 